Welcome to Astronomy Daily. I'm excited to bring you another packed episode of fascinating space and astronomy news. Today's lineup features some truly groundbreaking developments that showcase humanity's continued innovation in space exploration. We'll start with Japan's remarkable achievement in launching the world's first wooden satellite. Yes, you heard that right, wooden. Then we'll explore Russia's latest record-breaking launch that sent dozens of satellites into orbit in a single mission. We'll also take a look at an impressive new lunar vehicle that's pushing the boundaries of moon exploration, followed by compelling new evidence of ancient oceans on Mars that could reshape our understanding of the Red Planet's history. Finally, we'll clear up some recent speculation about life aboard the International Space Station and share the latest official updates from NASA. It's a show that spans from innovative space technology to potential signs of ancient water on Mars. So let's dive right in. In a groundbreaking development addressing the growing concern of space debris, researchers from the University of Kyoto have successfully launched the world's first wooden satellite into orbit. The innovative LingoSat, carried aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, marks a significant step forward in sustainable space technology. What makes this satellite truly unique is its construction material, magnolia wood. Apart from its essential electronic components, the entire satellite structure is wooden, representing a radical departure from traditional satellite design. At just 10 centimeters on each side and weighing a mere 900 grams, it's one of the lightest satellites ever launched into space. This innovative approach tackles a pressing issue in space exploration. Currently, there are over 40,500 objects larger than 10 centimeters orbiting Earth, with millions more smaller pieces cluttering our orbital space. When traditional satellites re-enter Earth's atmosphere, they can release potentially harmful metal particles. The LingoSat, however, is designed to completely burn up upon re-entry, leaving no harmful debris behind the satellite will soon be transported to the International Space Station, where it will be deployed from the Kibo Japanese Experiment Module. Over the next six months, researchers will closely monitor how the wooden structure holds up against the extreme conditions of space, including dramatic temperature fluctuations and intense radiation. This mission could revolutionize satellite construction. If successful, it could pave the way for more environmentally conscious space exploration, helping to prevent what scientists call Kessler syndrome, a theoretical scenario where the density of objects in low Earth orbit becomes so high that collisions cascade, creating more debris and potentially rendering parts of Earth's orbit unusable. A second wooden satellite, LingoSat-2, is already planned for launch in 2026, showing Japan's commitment to this innovative approach to space sustainability. Next up, Russia has achieved a remarkable milestone in its space program, launching an impressive array of 53 satellites in a single mission from the Vostokny spaceport in Russia's Far East. This launch represents a national record for Russia in terms of the number of domestic satellites deployed in a single mission, with 51 of the payloads being Russian-made. The mission utilized a Soyuz-2.1 B carrier rocket equipped with a Fregat upper stage, demonstrating Russia's continued capabilities in space launch technology. Among the diverse payload were two Ionosfera-M satellites, each weighing 430 kilograms, designed to monitor Earth's ionosphere, providing valuable data for atmospheric research and communications. What makes this launch particularly noteworthy is its international character. Despite current geopolitical challenges, the mission included collaborative projects with multiple nations. A Russian-Chinese satellite, a Russian Zimbabwean satellite and two Iranian satellites were part of the payload, highlighting ongoing international cooperation in space exploration. The Iranian contributions included the Kausar High Resolution Imaging Satellite and the Hod Hod Communication Satellite. While this launch marks a significant achievement for Russia, it's worth noting that the global landscape of space launches has evolved considerably over the past decade. Russia, once the world's leading launch provider, now ranks third in launch frequency behind the United States and China. Nevertheless, Russia maintains its important role in space exploration, continuing to support the International Space Station through regular progress resupply missions and Soyuz crew launches. This successful mission not only demonstrates Russia's technical capabilities, but also shows how space exploration continues to bridge international divides, fostering collaboration even during challenging times on Earth. The variety of satellites deployed will serve multiple purposes, 
from Earth observation to communications, contributing to both scientific research and practical applications in space technology. Talking of technology, I think I want one of these. A fascinating development in lunar exploration has just been unveiled in Houston, where Intuitive Machines has revealed their next-generation lunar terrain vehicle called Moon Racer. This reusable, autonomous crewed exploration rover represents a significant leap forward from the Apollo-era moon buggies, combining modern technology with practical design. The fully electric vehicle, built in collaboration with high-performance automotive company Rausch, is an impressive piece of engineering. Measuring 14 feet long, 8.5 feet tall, and 12 feet wide, this rover can reach speeds up to 9.3 miles per hour, matching its Apollo predecessor's capabilities. But what sets it apart is its enhanced functionality, including the ability to tow a 108-foot-long trailer and navigate slopes up to 20 degrees. One of the most innovative features of Moon Racer is its dual-mode operation. While astronauts can drive it manually, the vehicle is also capable of autonomous operation for robotic exploration. When crews aren't present, the rover can be controlled remotely from various locations, including Houston, Australia, lunar habitats, and even the Gateway Space Station orbiting the moon. The vehicle's communication capabilities are equally impressive, featuring antenna systems that can relay data via satellite or direct-to-Earth transmissions, ensuring constant connectivity during lunar operations. For safety and efficiency, Moon Racer is equipped with an advanced hazard avoidance system, allowing it to navigate challenging lunar terrain and clear obstacles up to a foot high. This development is part of NASA's broader Artemis program, with Intuitive Machines being one of three companies selected to develop lunar terrain vehicles under a $30 million contract. The stakes are high, as NASA plans to select one of these designs for deployment to the lunar south pole before the Artemis V mission scheduled for no earlier than 2030. In a touching nod to space history, the static mock-up of Moon Racer has already received the approval of Apollo veterans Charlie Duke and Harrison Schmidt, two of only six humans who have ever driven a rover on the lunar surface. Duke notably commented that this new vehicle was way more than we had, highlighting just how far lunar vehicle technology has progressed since the Apollo era. Let's head off to Mars now for an update. Exciting new findings from Mars are adding weight to a long-debated theory about the Red Planet's watery past. China's Zhurong rover, exploring the Utopia region in Mars's northern hemisphere, has uncovered compelling evidence that a vast ocean once covered up to a third of the planet's surface. The rover's investigation has revealed several telltale features around its landing site, including pitted cones, polygonal troughs, and etched flows. These geological formations are particularly significant because they typically form in areas where water or ice once existed. Perhaps most intriguingly, the research team has identified what appears to be an ancient shoreline near the study area. Using data from both the rover and satellite observations, scientists have pieced together a fascinating timeline. They estimate this Martian ocean formed during a massive flooding event approximately 3.7 billion years ago. The water body then experienced a freezing period, which carved out distinctive coastal features before eventually disappearing around 3.4 billion years ago. This discovery could have profound implications for our understanding of Mars's potential to have once harbored life. On Earth, life is believed to have emerged either in deep ocean environments near hydrothermal vents or in shallow tidal pools where water meets air. The confirmation of an ancient Martian ocean would suggest that similar conditions once existed on the Red Planet. While the research team remains appropriately cautious about their findings, noting that definitive proof would likely require bringing Martian rock samples back to Earth for analysis, these new observations add another piece to the puzzle of Mars's mysterious past. They provide fresh evidence that the dry, dusty world we see today was once a much more dynamic and potentially habitable planet. Fascinating new research has emerged about Apophis, the asteroid nicknamed after the Egyptian god of chaos, and what might happen during its extremely close encounter with Earth in 2029. While we've known about this approaching space rock for some time, scientists have now uncovered details about how Earth's gravity might dramatically reshape this celestial visitor. Apophis, which measures about 1,100 feet in length and has a distinctive peanut shape, 
will pass within just 20,000 miles of Earth, closer than some of our satellites. While this rules out any risk of impact, the close approach will subject the asteroid to intense gravitational forces that could trigger some remarkable changes. Computer simulations suggest that about an hour before its closest approach, Apophis will begin experiencing significant tremors. Think of it as an asteroid quake, but in this case, Earth's gravitational pull is the trigger. These vibrations could be strong enough to actually launch boulders off the asteroid's surface. While some rocks might escape completely, most will likely fall back, creating new patterns on the asteroid's surface. But that's not all. The encounter is expected to affect how Apophis tumbles through space. Unlike a perfect spinning top, this asteroid currently rotates irregularly. Picture a poorly thrown football. Earth's gravitational influence will either speed up or slow down this tumbling motion, depending on the asteroid's orientation during the flyby. This change in rotation could destabilize surface rocks and potentially trigger landslides that would continue to reshape the asteroid for thousands of years afterward. NASA's OSIRIS Apex mission will be there to witness these changes firsthand, having been repurposed from its successful Bennu sample return mission. The spacecraft will spend 18 months studying Apophis, giving us an unprecedented opportunity to watch how a close planetary encounter can transform an asteroid in real time. Finally, let's clear this up once and for all. In lighter news from space today, NASA has stepped forward to address some concerning tabloid reports about astronaut Suni Williams's health aboard the International Space Station. Several media outlets, including the Daily Mail and the New York Post, had published speculative stories about Williams's condition, basing their concerns on a September photo where they claimed she appeared gaunt. NASA has firmly refuted these claims, stating unequivocally that Williams, who currently commands Expedition 72, is in perfect health. The space agency emphasized that they are not tracking any health concerns with Williams or any other NASA astronauts currently aboard the station. This situation highlights the robust medical monitoring system in place for astronauts on the ISS. Each crew member undergoes regular medical evaluations and has dedicated flight surgeons watching over their health throughout their mission. Williams and her fellow astronaut, Butch Wilmore, have been aboard the station since June, arriving on Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. While their stay has been extended longer than initially planned, due to technical issues with Starliner's thruster system, NASA has confirmed they have plenty of supplies, including food, to support the extended mission. Williams and Wilmore are now scheduled to return to Earth in February 2025, traveling back with the SpaceX Crew-9 mission. This episode serves as an important reminder about the necessity of relying on official sources for space-related news, rather than speculative reporting that can cause unnecessary concern about our astronauts' well-being. And that wraps up today's episode of Astronomy Daily. From wooden satellites to Martian oceans, it's been another fascinating day in space news. I'm Anna, and I've enjoyed bringing you these incredible stories from across the cosmos. If you'd like to stay up to date with all the latest developments in space and astronomy, head over to astronomydaily.io, where you can sign up for our free daily newsletter. While you're there, check out our constantly updating news feed and browse through our complete archive of past episodes. Don't forget to join our growing community on social media. You can find us as Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, Tumblr, and TikTok. We love hearing your thoughts and questions about the stories we cover. Thank you for listening to Astronomy Daily. Until tomorrow, keep looking up and stay curious about our incredible universe. Astro.